What's up guys? I'm here at Clash Fest in Helsinki, Finland. Today we are watching Queen Walker Stephanie take on GS in the Clash of Clans World Championship quarterfinals. Let's see who's going to be victorious today. Who's going to win today? Um, well, if Queen Walker says they're going to end up on the thumbnail. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> GS will be launching in first. Sorry for step on your toes. This is a squad that merged with Neko Fun the World and had a loss to the Queen Walkers in Queso Cup 2 on a 14 11 scoreline. They are looking for revenge and have said that they want to be the new Japanese clan to rise and take that mantle. Kuma will be the first attacker coming in first here. He is one of the oldest members of this team. In fact, he was responsible for forming this squad that we have now. Let's see if he can carry them to victory in this first attack. That's right, early on taking down this Sweeper to get uh, some nice value because those fragments are not getting pushed back at all. And with that Warn ability, he's going to protect every single one of them. The Tornado Trap was missed, so there is no... Wait a second, that's actually a super minion clone to play. Oh my it's God. quite popular and it's so, so strong if you can take down all those key defenses. But the town also has to fall, Woody. That's not for whom the bell tolls, because when you hear that clone spell drop, it is coming for the Town Hall eliminated for the first star, and the second's going to come soon after. Kuma got a very nice split in the interior with the Dragons able to take air defense down quite easily. But unfortunately, on the bottom side, things went a bit awry. He's got a bottom circle now with Dragons and two Dragon Riders there, while this Grand Warden is going to be out cold. Yeah, now everything is relying again on the heroes. I feel like this is just such a classic thing for the heroes to circle around the base. The Royal Champion is going to get sent in at some point to maybe take down some second layer defenses. So where is he going to place them? Is he going to place it for this multi front tower? Or is he going to place her somewhere different to maybe force the king inside? We're going to find out in just a second because so far, he's just not placing it. There we go now, but the Royal Gem. I don't know if that was planned. Stacking on a little bit more firepower here. Kuma is ready to adapt on the fly. That air defense up top isn't really going to be too much of an issue since there's only one dragon left. It's all up to the heroes at this point. And that scatter shot, the key defense, doing so much damage. Barbarian King's getting off the globe, but you know what? With two spells left and still two abilities, I'm feeling pretty confident for Kuma. As long as he keeps his head on straight, he should be able to knock these defenses out without much difficulty. Freezes out, does miss the mortar on that, but it's not too much of a problem. That splash damage is easily negatable. And Kuma will cruise on toward the top, where the last remaining defenses are about to get knocked down. The epic, the epic encounter, in fact, against the Barbarian King. Confused and retreating now, <laughs> Kuma will go on for the triple. That's right. The Royal Champion have to, has to go down to get that multi front tower, but that's no problem whatsoever. There is the flag. The flag. Just show some dominance, and this means GS starting off strong. We have said it, and we will say it again. Those first attacks are so crucial in those matches, getting the momentum going for your team. That's exactly what he did. Oh yes, I am ready for a Queen Charge Dragon Rider Pro. Is that what Gaku's gonna bring in on this next attack to try to tie things up against GS? Let's hop into the action. Yes, he is! He said it. <laughs> nice prediction there with the Queen Charge Dragon Riders. Gaku loves to do those Queen Charges. There's the tornado trap though. Is this going to be a problem? What is going to be in that blimp? Is it a safety blimp? Which means uh, some CK goblins. He's... Wait a second, he's raging. Wait, that's Bow? What? Bow is... Bowlers. Invisible Bowlers. Bowlers. For the town hall. Just genius. The town hall's going down. Oh, oh and he gets it. The and the inferno down. tower is behind it. Like, what what is the heck was that like? Any typical wow. player to sneak in some sneaky goblins, but it takes a pro move like Gaku's right there to knock down not only the town hall, but get an extra defense on the backside as well. Excellent aiming there. Did you get that bowler splash damage off by even just a little bit? That could have been a big mistake. But Gaku pulls it off nonetheless and will move into the second stage of the attack now. He has spent almost a minute on this early poke and doesn't even have 10% yet, barely crossing that threshold now as he gets the setup for his Dragon Riders to come in next. That's right, and I just love it so much that we are seeing so many different approaches. I mean, yes, Queen Charge Dragon Rider is the most uh, inventive strategy, but at the same time, like, those boulders, I have never seen that before. Really impressive. 
Now this Queen Charge is uh, going, trying to go for everything, but I feel like she has uh, taken the wrong step into the wrong compartment because she cannot reach the Eagle from this one. I feel like that Queen was supposed to get into that channel in the core. Yeah, bit of an awkward entry here, but nonetheless, the Barbarian King will be there to get some work done <laughs> as well. If she can't do it, he can. Makes it all the way on the inside and will take out multiple different defenses. He's still trying to chop away at it. One more punch, there is the Barony that got it. Yeah, nicely done. And now the Royal Champion trying to get the Speeper out of the way. So those Dragon Rides are not getting pushed away that far anymore. With those minions behind, heating things up. Time might be not that big of an issue, but there's two air defenses standing. The first air defense is getting taken care of of the Royal Champion. And the second one from the Queen, nice. so no air defense is left. This is looking good. Just perfect. Ever so slightly enough damage to knock it out. But hey, horseshoes and hand grenades is where close counts. For Gaku, dominance is all that matters. Destroying every defense that could possibly stand against these Dragon Riders. Look, all four of them still flying. Uh, you should not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the black bombs are coming out hard. But it's at the end of the attack, and Gaku's already secured the triple. That's right. What a beautiful attack. I mean, that beginning. I mean, that was already a highlight in itself. Using the bonus, this out of the box thinking. This is what we love to see. And I mean, this was just the first attack. Oh, dude, it's insane, dude. I cannot believe he did that. And it will be Nairome attacking next. He's brought in 10 dragons, massing them up. More often uses the Lava Loon on his own, but maybe he got the sense that Queen Walker Stephanie is trying to prevent that sort of entry to the base. We've seen a couple of air defenses unprotected out on the outer edges. Could be easy pickings. He's already knocked down one over on that right side compartment and will be quickly focusing on the second here at number six position. Nairomi is going to protect his battle plan to be eternal to home, and let's see how it progresses deep into the base. Take it away, Itsu. Yeah, the blimp again is flying across. Based on the sweepers, this looks like a somewhat obvious entry. Another but we one. The Super Minion Blimp again wow. for that Town Hall, for the Inferno Tower, for the Expo to really prevent those dragons passing into the Town of Poison. But the heroes are just circling around this far left side and pushing those dragons even further into this core. Death from above. Shock and awe by Nairome using that Battle Blimp to launch so many offensive troops in. Got a little careful there on that free spell placement, but does catch the single target. Inferno is able to get the lock next on the scatter shot in the right compartment. Dragons in the center are having a bit of trouble with these builder huts, but they ought to be able to pass through and try to help out for that last leg of the strike. Royal Champion moving in on the top left should get the target next onto that air defense. She'll take that out. Dragon over on the right side is down, though, and that Grand Warden's feeling awfully lonely. Can the heroes finish off this top compartment to finish off the three star? Oh my goodness, they could get this tornado trap really far on the outside. This wants to bait a blimp or something over there. But they did not go into the bait. They did not fall for it. Queen ability now in. And with it, what is this? Where is the skeleton army coming from on the far right side? I mean, they came out of nowhere and they're finishing this base with those heroes. Another overwhelming super offensive strike here. Nairomi from GS still holding on to a poison spell this time has clearly and cleanly taken victory. That's right, and they keep pressuring Queen Walkers. Queen Walkers will be next. All right, the start in from Stars next. An incredible player in the Legend League. In fact, in the Japanese leaderboard, he finished number one and was even number two on the global leaderboard. Maybe the most practiced player on this Queen Walker Stephanie lineup. My goodness. We cannot have enough of these internal strong strikes. The Skelly Donut's going to be taking out a big chunk of the middle here. He needs to get the lock onto this clan castle and is using lots of invis spells. Unfortunately, he's lost a few of these bats to defenses, not getting the perfect placement here. They're starting to stab away. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. Oh, Star just missed the, the uh, invisibility spell. Uh oh. What was the point of that? Is he going to be able to get there? I think he Did he miss it? He made the, he made the clan castle invisible by accident. Oh, he didn't get it either. Oh, no. Something went uh -oh. for sure. It's going to be rough for Stars. We have seen Stars already. I don't know if his hit rate is even higher when he's messing up the, the Skelly Donut, but 
if there's a player who can still save this, it is Stars. So let's wait how much he can take down with those heroes, because the, the fact with this one is the heroes won't even knock the clan castle. I think in the beginning, that's as I'm saying it, the clan castle is getting lured. I think that, well, there were some troops inside the range. A little bit of distraction for that road champion, but oh, she is just getting demolished by the rocket loons there. Tosses her shield early and didn't even finish off the enemy royal champion. Stars might have now the most difficult entry of any loon strike yet. Still holding on to one of his lava hounds for a later point to back up the rest of this army. Early eternal tome here now as he tries to protect them beyond belief. It seems like he still is managing to survive somehow. But can he loop all around to the edge of the right corner where there's still another air defense waiting? Yeah, but I feel like the majority of splash damage is about to fall. Now it's everything coming down to the red mines and the defending queen. That defending queen right now is shooting non-stop. The scatter shot as well. The scatter shot has to go down, and that's what is happening right now. Defending, defending super queen. minion. The defending queen. There's a, there's a super minion on the back side sniping the electro owl. How is this getting so close? Stars is just insane. Just imagine this opening would have worked. But the defending queen and the defending super minion, as you said, surviving for so long and taking those loons out. And that is, I think, so far the, the best defense of the teams. And I think GS is going to be really happy with that one, while Stars is uh, not going to be happy with that first invisibility spell. Yeah, this might be the best defense we've seen all day. Kuma holding Stars at bay. A very big upset here now for GS to take the victory on this round number two. Queen Walkers are going to have to go back to the drawing board, and if they're going to use any fancy attacks like a Skelly Donut again, they're going to have to make sure that the targeting is tile perfect, pixel perfect, in fact. That's right. Finally, the Clan Castle is going to fall, but it's just too late for this attack. He's uh, getting quite more percentage than I thought around the outset. It's going to be an 86% two star. are going in again. We have the next attack live and we have Ren attacking next with 14 Inferno Dragons versus this base from Gaku. So what is going to be the entry? We've seen no, uh, well we've seen two more Inferno Towers which typically is not the nicest to go into with those Inferno Dragons. He's choosing those dragons to go into there and we see all of them getting released at this top side of the base. Pushing in uh, with the skeleton spell tanking, there should be uh, quite some protection with the warden ability going off and protecting the blimp all the way towards the town hall. Talk about massive firepower. Any single defense that these Inferno Dragons lock onto just gets burnt up in very short order. But what they have in damage, they lack in the ability to kind of spread out. They're highly targeted offensive troops that really must stay clustered up to keep that DPS super high so that they can knock down those defenses one by one. A cluster of Inferno Dragons will path along to the left side and support this Archer Queen push while the rest of the internal pack is going to get some support from that Dragon Rider in the middle. Still dropping freezes all over, just doing all he can. Oh, oh no, unfortunately couldn't knock out the CC in time. And that's going to be a pull of the Lava Hound, which will distract those Inferno Dragons for a very long time. Those pups are just running rampant all around the Inferno Dragons, giving free access to that Tesla, the Builder Hut, the Archer Tower, the multi-target Inferno to fire away at those poor dragons. That's right, but there's the Royal Champion coming in, and so far is he looking uh, possible to get this back and done, because take a look at that one Inferno wow. Dragon. It's just beaming away that Expo, and it feels like this scatter is going to, as well, go down versus those dragons with the help of that King. And with the Royal Champion and the Queen ability, Woody, I think Jess is still going to look to go perfect. Very nice job by Ren. It's going to be a nail biter, but I think you're right that he's got a great chance to finish off this final compartment. No big defenses that are giving me too much concern, and especially with that shield from the Royal Champion knocking all of them down. Boom, 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 one by one. This is going to be a clutch finish from Ren to keep GS ahead. That's right, Queen Ability just to speed time a little bit up because we all know maybe time is going to be an issue, but wait a second. Hold on. There is just a ton of Army skeletons of spawning and swarming those heroes, but that shouldn't be any difference. 40 seconds, and this is no chance for the defense. Ren getting the next 3-star in for GS. 
Ren, the OG from GS, has been on this roster longer than any of the other players and has definitely confirmed his position. Another triple from GS puts them at a total of nine to the Queen Walkers five. And we should be in any second with that next attack. Queen Walkers, they have to stay close. They have to stay close in the score. Otherwise, GS will run away with their lead. And we have Kazuma in with Queen George Lalo. So far, I don't see a lock launcher, but Queen George Lalo is going to be the strategy for him. And he is uh, taking a look at if there's any traps. He's not finding any of them. Funneling the Queen already with some loons and making sure this queen is uh, charging towards that town hall, it seems like. Kazuma is a former member of a Thallion joining this roster to boost their performance. Lots of experience on the grand stage and will bring that to bear, trying to pull Queen Walkers back ahead in a very difficult position right now. Out in the right corner, they're gonna get an easy shot at this Tesla uh, farm popping up. Three, four, five, all of them are there, in fact. And that's good news for Kazuma. Pretty easy snipe for that queen. And that means that there's even less to worry about on the back end with uh, balloons. Do you think that Ryuta was baiting this entry, or is Kazuma pretty happy to find these traps? I mean, I am not sure. Like, on one hand, it's nice to take down the Tesla from earlier. On the other hand, though, this is taking a lot of time for this Queen yeah. to get through the Tesla form, which is bonus hit points, get through all of those skeleton traps. If there's another skeleton trap, that might be a big problem. Maybe they were just expect expecting something like, oh, one more, That's a maybe. Baited corner. <laughs> maybe a flame finger. Who knows? But right now, the George is looking solid, and I think he's already starting with this Lalo, or at least with the King Port, because it seems like time is ticking. Oh, Rocket Loons? Yeah, it's good ability. Interesting follow-up down and out from the bottom, and Rocket Loons in the CC demand a quick response from Kazuna. He will keep that queen awfully safe, but look at that. Super Minions with the Long Bomb because the queen was in this. Oh, last in the healer there. Kazuma still should be pretty safe, though, raging up those healers to give them even more healing capacity. Triage for Kazuma as he now drops the Eternal Tome on the bottom to protect that entire clump of troops. Not too many uh, balloons in it, though. It looks like it was just the Barbarian King and his coterie. Yeah, but just insane skill to really navigate the Slammer through the core, taking down uh, the Inferno Towers, taking down the Expos, which were out of range of those heroes. And it just seems like those heroes were just supposed to walk the entire base, while the Queen just taking down the channel behind the behind the town. Oh, this is looking so good. It should be the next three star, and he's having rages left. Wow, this is incredible overkill, and the Queen wow. Walkers stride back onto the stage in grand fashion. The triple with so many remaining extra troops. It's wow. That was just that was just a really impressive watch. I th uh, impressive attack. I think one of the cleanest attacks we have seen so far. It feels with yes, that was the test of form, but just this level of multitasking. We have seen so many pros seeing. Okay, there is the rocket loom clan castle coming out. They feel like. I can still save this. Maybe I can still like use the poison, use the freezes. But no, he just said, okay, I was a bit late. I had to multitask on the other side of the base, which is understandable. So you just used the Queen Ability, kept everything safe. This was super impressive. And take a look at this pathing now of the Slammer right into the core, taking down the front tower, which was out of range from all of the other heroes. And then the heroes just finished things off with the Queen Charge, with the King Walk, with the Lalo. That was really nicely done. With a battle blimp basically giving a guaranteed one star, taking down the town hall, you really need something strong about picking a different siege machine to justify that investment. Stone Slammer definitely pulling its weight in that last strike, though. Essentially an army of one, and then it drops a clan castle to boot. But you know what? Let's see what's next on our plate. GS are going to be coming back in. Let's see if they can maintain the lead. Go for it. And the next attacker is in for GS. We have Ryuta coming in, and it's going to be Inferno Dragons again. It wow. seems like they really found their strategy for the beginning matches with going with those Inferno Dragons. I think they have not used that strategy too much. They were mainly coming in with Lalo attacks. So maybe that's their approach. They're saying, okay, we are... We're famous for using our Lalo attacks. So let's yeah. mix things up and completely second guess uh, Queen Walkers because those Queen Chargers, they're not coming. Well, I know some of the same principles are going to apply. You have 
really important focus on those black bombs, trying to dodge those as Rita just does with the Eternal Tome there. Avoiding the air defenses, knocking down that Town Hall early so you can just focus on the defenses on the second wave of the hit. Ryuta will get that first star easily thanks to that Battle Blimp floating on in and will now be able to refocus onto the Inferno Dragons. A little bit of a spread on them, but nothing too difficult to worry about. The Grand Warden could just edge down a little bit more. He could help out those two Inferno Dragons trying to take on that single Inferno Tower. Do you think that he's going to invest a freeze to try to keep him up? Uh, we, we would see, but the most yeah. impressive thing was how he handled the King. He sent one separate Inferno Dragon to take down the King with his Queen, and he used a Skeleton Spell to keep them in place, but at the same time, this has cost him that the Clan Castle was lured in. Those Inferno Dragons, they're just slowly disappearing with their Queen now stuck in the core. She cannot help the King of the Royal Chamber on the outside. It's now Inferno versus Inferno, and the Tower wins the duel. Ryuta has now just a little bit left to add on to this attack. Two abilities from his heroes, but it's almost all over with a scatter shot and still big Inferno Towers to fire away. These heroes are not looking too happy about their chances. No, remember, the two-star attack from Walkers was way above this percentage. And so far, the Queen seems like, wow. okay, I will take the worst to worst wall with being kind of out of range of all of the other defenses. So it's really, really unfortunate for him right now. Ugh. The Queen is staying alive a little bit longer, but this is not going to be the percentage they were looking for. This is a really low percentage, which means Queen Walkers might be back in this. This base has held up incredibly. Those Inferno Dragons were just about as useful as a chocolate teapot, melting at the incredible might of Yuda 14's defenses here. And the Queen Walker Stephanie got exactly what they were looking for. Not just a defense, but a firm foothold into the late war with a percentage lead now over GS. But they need to get that three star of their own yeah. to get this tied back up on stars and claim that percentage advantage. That's right. They have to get the three star first, making sure that they are able to tie the stars again in this matchup. But I mean, we have still some uh, scary attackers on the Queen Walker side. I think if they're following their route, we should see Klaus next. I mean, he is uh, for sure one of the favorite players of the crowd, of the community to watch, and I cannot wait what he will bring. But this means for now, GS is still having the lead. Queen Walker is up next. It's gonna be Klaus, in fact. Yo, it's Klaus. Klaus. There we go. <laughs> Klaus. 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 What is he using? Well, I mean, with Klaus, everything is different. I can't see the army. He's running again like his complete own approach because he likes those hero dives. He's bringing the the man, the myth, the legend himself. Klaus is in. With oh Sui Lalo, here we go. Oh, oh boy. With a jump spell on the outside open walls. <laughs> then maybe the lockdown should dive towards the town. I mean, he has done crazy divers. I cannot wait to see how much limit testing he's going to do with those heroes on this one. Devilish entry. I do question whether the jump spell was worth it. He really must want to take down this multi target inferno. Uh, very much so. But he got the freeze on there, and that protected the troops for a little bit longer as Klaus will now spread out the heroes going on both the left and bottom sides of this base. Try to pierce deeper inside. Log Launcher directly onto that Eagle Artillery and grabs a multi Inferno and is even going to start to tick away at that single target Inferno as it paths directly toward the Town Hall. I like this entry from Klaus. But look out, Rocket Loons are swarming on in. The strike against that Royal Champion is going to finish them off, and the poor, poor Yetis have no way to fire back against that Rocket Loon squad. This is just so crazy. I mean, maybe normal players would have waited for the heroes to get their value, but he's already starting with those Lado to make sure that he's protecting this Queen, which is now working as cleanup, or if there's any defense left standing, this Queen can now get this out of the way. Using the Warden ability really early on, Heal Spill as well to get out of the Town of Poison as quickly as possible with getting heal, uh, healing things wow. up. And we see already, oh, we hear already the crowd cheering because they know already what is left of this base. That's right, it's nothing. 
Heal spell is a bit unusual. We usually see the rage with these loons, but Klaus has kept so many of them up. Once again, a monstrous overkill from the Queen Walker Stephanie, and Klaus will indeed keep them in the lead now. That percentage advantage justified with another triple, and on an 11-11 scoreline, it's now up to GS to try to clutch another triple on their very final attack just to give themselves a little bit of hope against the overwhelming staying power that Queen Rockers brings to bear. Ogayati for the last one of GS today. It's going to be an interesting lava and ice mix. He's going to be backing those up with plenty of balloons to boot, but the first strike is from the top corner. Yet he's going to get in there, and then a lightning spell claims a lot of value in that top compartment. Almost even killed the world champion. Yeah, already a lot of damage is dealt towards that world champion, which is always a nice thing to have. With the Yeti creating this pathing, this funnel for the Queen, she has no other option than going towards the town, but he now needs to force her in. Maybe he's using Baby Dragon or something to get rid of this Archer Tower, because the King is separate on the other side to go for that Eagle compartment. I love just the single one-off use of an Ice Golem or a Valkyrie to add a little bit more oomph to these attacks. Wizard is going to back up a Royal Champion out here on the left, and this takes a lot of patience and attention from Obiati. Any single misclick of one of these troops could be the death of this hero dive, but Obiati is not going to let that happen. Even sends in a Headhunter to help out this Barbarian King, who faces off against his Mirror Match and finds the Royal Champion to be easy pickings. Just enough hit points left on this Archer Queen to pop that ability in the right side corner to grab that Town Hall for the first star. Second one's going to be coming up very shortly afterwards as we pass 50%. And look at that, he's just finally gotten to deploying those balloons outside on the bottom with that Grand Warden to protect them. This is a beautiful hit from Ogoyati. Yeah, this looks so far really good. The Headhunters are staying alive to take down that defending queen. The Scatter is about to fall. The Right Mines are getting triggered Ooh. by this eye sound. And now everything is flying towards the first Mojang front tower. The first Mojang front tower is going to fall. The back end is already getting uh, Lalo away with the Hound. And the Slammer is there to take down the next Mojang front tower. Just gigantic value from that free spell there. Clutching up the defense of the Stone Slayer. Able to shut down the Air Sweeper, the Multi Inferno. And you know what else? He got two Teslas in that freeze radius as well. Ogayati finding so much value. Look at that. The Stone Slammer didn't even pop in this entire attack. Holding on to an invis as well. GS have just shown so many overwhelming strikes in this war. But you know what? One miss can make all the difference. GS with 14 stars is now in a very vulnerable position because Queen Walkers has the opportunity to take the win with a triple of their own. The next one more last attack is now underway. And we have again one of those box spaces with all of the Inferno Towers lined up in that middle. Wow. And we have a Queen Charge, we have some Dragons, we have a Yeti, and we have the Dragon Rider in the mix as well. So a lot of different troops, but only one wall breaker is in there and no jump whatsoever. So I cannot wait to see if Yuta can make this work because Queen Walkers need this three star to stay in the upper bracket. Sneaky Goblin ensures that we get a good pathing here from the Archer Queen, taking down that cannon and moving in on the air defense next. Nice setup for the Dragons and Dragon Rider to follow. Those healers still well protected out on the backside. Haven't encountered any trouble yet. No traps. And in fact, we are going to get a Coconut Loon to support them indeed as they get into this bottom left compartment, finding the CC pull and the Eagle Artillery next up. Freeze and a Poison now out to make sure that the Queen stays safe from that Headhunter. Big problem if your queen starts taking lots of head under damage slowing down her hits and making things very difficult yeah i think i heard already the first dragon getting deployed because he's starting early trying to get damage off his queen because this ground expo is not in range of his like not in range of his queen while the expo is shooting the queen so that's kind of tricky for him the warden is getting used instead of the tornado trap raise it up Town Hall should go down without any problems. 
All's good on the right side corner. Keep an eye on that single target Inferno, though. It's well protected by three builder uh, huts right on the outside. But Yeti Mites distracting the single target beam, keeping this uh, dragon army safe. He does hold two uh, free spells, and he uses one of them there to protect one of the dragons. They're going to clump back up now as they make their way to the final side of the base, but they are not looking too healthy here, Itsu. No, it feels like the dragons are slowly getting taken care of. But remember, he has the back end king, he has the back end royal champion, and who has healers caught in the tornado trap. This is a bit of an awkward split now for King. still working on trash on 6 o'clock. I don't know. I don't know if he's got it or not. Only 55 seconds. Okay. There goes his last healer. All healers down. Has a queen ability though. No more healers to help her out. Oh, he decides to save the queen with the freeze. Was that the right call? I don't know. I don't know. He's got a queen ability though. But he has to get the defensive queen down. This is the... Oh, nice invisibility! The invis for the royal champion. She takes out the queen. <laughs> What a finish this was. This was just super incredible, keeping his nerves calm and making sure that he's finishing this attack in style with his heroes. And I cannot wait to hear from the stage what Queen Walkers have to say. So let's send it over. A slightly dicey ending to that, but that was just the finish that they needed to secure a spot in the upper bracket for tomorrow's matches. I have to say, Yuta, we have to discuss something, okay? 2020, second place. 2021, second place. Is this your year? Now we thought we can do it. <laughs> well, definitely, it was a close ending, but what a war to kick things off for you, so you must be very confident now. I have to say as well that Kazuma being a new addition to your team, what does he bring to the table? Uh, he's basically a super attacker and he brings uh, more uh, like vast attack opportunities so we have many more strategies to attack our opponents with now. Well I mentioned this earlier on today that we're talking about pressure a little bit on the main stage we have spoken about it quite a lot but the fact that the community have voted you to be the favorites for the entire competition has that added any pressure or does that fuel you for this competition? あの、クラクラのファンの皆さんは前に調査でクイーンウォーカーズは本命だと決定しましたけれども、これは何かプレッシャーを与えましたか？それからそれともこれを生かして力になると思いますか？うん、全然プレッシャーにはならないし、応援